Hi, I'm James. Welcome back to Marriage Mondays. Today we're going to look at how to argue well, how to fight a good fight. Now to do that, there are seven different points I'm going to make. Seven sounds like a lot. I'm going to rattle through them. We're going to discuss them. Marriage is work. It's worth it. So number one is don't run from strife. Number two is choose your battles carefully. Three, define the issue. Four, share your feelings directly. Five, rate the intensity of your feelings. Six, give up on put downs. And seven, don't dwell on downers. So first one, don't run from strife. There's a story of a genie who said, whoever lets me out of this lamp within the first hundred years, I'm going to grant three wishes. Then that first uh, set of time goes. And so he said, the next person to let me out of this lamp, I'm going to kill. Resentment breeds and it develops in us until it's eventually let out. So it's important to tackle issues, even if they are challenging, even if they may have some kind of confrontation. There was something that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago which uh, I found really helpful in our marriage. Uh, my wife Charlotte sent me a list of things uh, that she believed that she needed, especially in this time of quarantine when it's just us in this small space. And I've then been working on those different things that she really needed in order to thrive in marriage and in this time in lockdown and she asked me to share what my things that I, I would require of her in this time. We may have another video on that later, we'll see. Now second was choose your battles carefully. It can be all too easy to pick up on something small. Don't sweat that small stuff. Before beginning an argument, before get beginning at that confrontation, think, is this worth it? Is it important how my wife or husband um, squeezes the toothpaste or makes the bed? There are some things that are important. There are some things that need that um, confrontation. There are some things that need to be challenged but in a loving way not in a confrontational, aggressive way. <clears throat> the next one is define the issue clearly. There's a story in the book that we're going through, Save Your, Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts, where there's a couple, Ron and Shari, who are having a dinner with some friends who have come over, and out of nowhere they just start arguing and uh, they realise what they're doing in front of friends and so they just abruptly stop and um, it was only until afterwards that it was uh, it came out that um, Shari, the, the wife, was upset because Ron came back home uh, from work late and then left all the preparations for the dinner to her. But it was just from um, something as simple as not making the coffee in a quick enough time at the end of the meal that really let a blow a fuse. And so it's important that we, when we do have that confrontation, when we do argue, that we actually confront the issue that we have an issue with. The next one is share your feelings directly. There's a story... Um, again in the book, which is actually for the next section. So forget that for a moment. Uh, to, so to share your feelings directly, there's a formula that is offered. It's called the XYZ formula. And that is to help us to state our feelings. So think of this approach like a game where you fill in the blanks for X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> so in situation X, when you do Y, I feel Z. For example, when you're on the road and you don't tell me that you miss me, I feel unloved and lonely. There's a big difference in putting things across in this way than just having some kind of argument because of that loneliness and feeling of being unloved. Next, we go to rating the intensity of your feelings. Now, this, I think, is, is so, so important. There's a story of a couple, um, James and Karen, who want to redecorate their kitchen. 
and Karen comes home excitedly. I found the perfect colour. She had some uh, some matches from the local DIY store and she was so happy about it. And her husband, James, says, oh, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, and she says, oh, well, when it's on the wall, you'll you'll love it. I don't know, he responds. And that's the last that they speak about it. A couple of days later, he comes back home from work and there's the kitchen wall completely redone in this colour. And he can't believe it. He says, what have you done? We didn't agree on this. Yes, we did, she thought. He clearly didn't express his feelings on the issue. She thought when saying, I don't know, that he didn't really care. So it's important, again, when we are looking at a certain issue, that we're clear on how we feel about it, rating our intensity. There in the description down below, I'm going to have a link to uh, something called a conflict card that the parrots have created. And it's on their website, relationship, realrelationships.com. Sorry, that's realrelationships.com. And it's a card, credit card size, so you can print it out, put it in your wallet or your purse, and it goes through from one to 10 the intensity that you feel about a certain situation, a certain issue, ranging from, I'm not enthusiastic, but it's no big deal to me, to 10 over my dead body. Now, they do, um, uh, alongside this, say that if um, both partners rank certain issues as seven or higher on a regular basis, then they should seek some marriage counselling. <clears throat> Number six, give up on put downs. When we're in a marriage and a relationship where we know everything about each other, it can be quite easy to, uh, to be derogatory with our words. There's that phrase, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. Words hurt. There may have been words that have been... Um, said over us, said to us many years ago, that we still hurt from, we still need healing from. And sometimes for just a, uh, what seemingly might be a, uh, a small thing, our spouse can exacerbate that. There's uh, uh, an example that here that they give where um, a, a, the husband was nicknamed um, Egghead in uh, <clears throat> in high school and that has then been latched on to by the wife so then that's just regurgitating that pain again every time she comes up with that word and it could go for the husband to the wife as well so it's so important that we don't use derogatory language to describe our husband or wife on a regular basis that also is so important when we're talking with our friends and when we're talking with family about our husband or wife. It's so telling if there is a spouse who will not share negative um, thoughts or stories about or things that will make their husband or wife look bad. So how can we cultivate politeness in our relationships? Well, first thing, we can greet each other with an embrace or a, a loving word, a, a loving greeting. Um, when a partner, a husband or wife does a chore, we can show that we appreciate it. <clears throat> and when we have meal times, we can be present. We can put the phones away, we can put the screens away and just be there and talk. And finally, don't dwell on downers. See, an argument and a marriage is never um, bad because of one person. We can get this idea that, oh, because my wife has said this, then I've got to say this. This is how I will react. Because she has done something to rile me up, then I'm going to be angry. We still have a choice. We can still be loving. We can still show grace. We should be able to show grace to the person that we're going to spend the rest of our lives with. Here's an example. So the husband comes back home and says, oh, I guess my mistake was looking forward to a nice dinner because his wife hadn't got around to making a meal. <clears throat> she
she responded with were if you came home on time, you might have gotten one. You care more about your job than me. So he responds, somebody's got to make a living. She says, it wouldn't be you if I didn't work like a dog to put you through school. This kind of antagonism is really not a good sign in marriage. There's got to be a commitment from husband and wife to exit a, an argument lovingly and not stay in that place. So here's how the conversation could have gone. Husband comes home. I was really looking forward to a decent meal tonight. And she responds, your hours are so unpredictable. I can plan one. Sorry, your hours are so unpredictable. I can't plan one. He says, there's no choice. I'm under a lot of pressure at work. She says, well, for tonight, shouldn't we just order pizza? There's a lot more pleasantness. There's a lot more love in that conversation. To conclude, there was a, a brilliant video that I saw where the uh, psychologist Jordan Peterson was advising a couple on difficulties in their marriage. And he was saying, uh, people think that you shouldn't argue, but you should. There are so many conflicts. You're two different people. You have different dreams, different career ambitions, different ideas of how you should bring up a family because of how you were brought up in two different families. The, uh, the issue is, what are you arguing, to, arguing towards? What we should be arguing towards is peace. If we're just arguing for argument's sake, like was uh, talked about in that last section, and just continuing that negativity, that antagonism, there's a problem there. But if we're both arguing for peace, if we argue and then make up and then apologise and then make a, a new pattern, a new uh, way of doing things, a new rule that we then do to prevent that confrontation, that argument from happening again, then eventually we may argue again. But the arguments will become less intense and less frequent. Thank you so much for listening to me so far into this. God bless you. I'm praying for you. See you next week.